This is lecture 6-4, metamorphic rocks. <clears throat> metamorphic rocks form from under heat pressure of other rocks that have been buried deeply. So an igneous rock or a sedimentary rock undergoes heat and pressure. It can become a metamorphic rock. Rocks change without being completely melted. If they melted, then they would end up becoming an igneous rock. But these are without completely melting. The rock's appearance, texture, crystal structure, and mineral contents can all change. Some typical things that happen is it will become denser and it will become stronger. And that's actually a key thing there because that will change the properties, it will change the crystal structure, it will change the size of the crystals, and that makes a different type of rock. Now, we can break up metamorphic rocks pretty much into two main groups, foliated or non-foliated. Now, it has to do with how they look. If it looks foliated, it'll have parallel layers of minerals there. Banded just means that those minerals are different colors. So maybe this is that color, and then so that'd be banded and foliated. Non-foliated would be, well, no layers. And the reason why the layers is because of the minerals that make that up. So you'll see different layers of minerals inside of that rock. So any igneous or sedimentary rock can become metamorphic. Here, marbles, metamorphic rock comes from limestone, which is a sedimentary rock. Slate is metamorphic, comes from shale, which is another sedimentary rock. Sandstone is a sedimentary rock, it undergoes heat and pressure, becomes quartzite. And granite, which is an igneous rock, undergoes heat and pressure, becomes nice. So on the right side here you see gneiss, on the left side you see granite. And granite underwent heat and pressure to form this gneiss. Gneiss is denser, you can see how the crystals appear different, and so you can see the effect the heat and pressure would have on it. Uh, slate forms from shale, and they look a lot alike except for shale. You could actually probably take a large piece of shale and break it with your hand, where slate is a very, very strong rock and it's actually great for building materials. Now, of course, limestone is a generally weak rock that we break up whenever we use it. We break it down to smaller pieces. Marble, however, which is a very dense, uh, sturdy rock, is great for building countertops out. If you build a countertop out of limestone, it's probably going to break, especially because water would actually be able to pour through it. Now, there are different types of metamorphism. This is how the rocks change, how they become metamorphic. So three main types of rock is regional, so when rock and is in a mountain building region, it's transformed by both heat and pressure. So remember when we talk about a convergent plate boundary, so here's kind of like my oceanic, and here's my uh, continental plate, and they build up, and we can see some mountains here. In this area here, where we get all that contact happening, uh, that is where we're going to actually get the heat and pressure forming to create the metamorphic rock. It also happens if you have like two continental plates meeting uh, this way in our region to cause that. Now, contact metamorphism happens when rocks are near an igneous intrusion in lava or lava flow. So think about deep underground, and here's our rock sample, and all of a sudden we have this layer of lava, well, which is magma underground, but lava going to the surface. If this is close enough to it to get heated up but without melting, then it can change. It can metamorphize into a metamorphic rock. Uh, and dynamic is when large-scale movements where huge masses of rock are forced over other rock. Um, and so it's in that area where we're going to get, anytime we have a lot of friction, that can create the dynamic metamorphism. So here's just another picture explaining this. Um, so regional is where we're going to get pressure caused by heat uh, and stress. Like say in a mountain building re region, you can kind of see like in here. Uh, contact metamorphism is going to be close to that magma or lava. Dynamic is going to be where there's faulting and pressure and uh, diagonal stress. So dynamic would be more about right here. Contact would be where the magma is sleeping up. And regional is where we're below the mountains forming because there is that heat. So the heat and pressure do this, and that can be caused by friction, caused by uh, pressure underground, or it can become by close proximity to magma or lava. Now the rock cycle is how our rocks go from stage to stage. We have our three main types of rock, metamorphic, igneous, and sedimentary. The materials that make them up are constantly getting changed by weathering and erosion, by plate tectonics, by volcanic activity. 
Let's say, for example, I have an igneous rock. Let's say I have a sample of basalt. Well, that basalt can get weathered down and eroded away into sediment. Then once it's sediment, it can get compacted and cemented and become a sedimentary rock. So let's say now my basalt is something like sandstone. Well, that sandstone can undergo heat and pressure, and all of a sudden it's a metamorphic rock. Now the metamorphic rock could melt, become magma, and once it's magma, become an igneous rock, and we could start the cycle all over again. Or once it's a metamorphic rock, maybe it's weathered and eroded again, becomes sediment again, and forms a different sedimentary rock. Once the sedimentary rock gets heat and pressure again, metamorphic, metamorphic melts. Sedimentary rock can also melt to become magma. So that's kind of a stage this is missing here. Um, and of course, magma cooling, or what I like to say for this is volcanic activity, either above ground or below ground, forms igneous. So the material that makes up the rocks is constant motion, and these are the different ways that it can move from one stage to another stage. So the stages are magma sediment, igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary. Then these arrows here are the transitions, how it can move from one stage to another stage. So the materials, when we pick up a rock outside, you can look at it, and that rock hasn't always been that rock. You go to a beach, you look at sand. That sand used to be a form of rock. And then before it was that rock, it was a different rock. And so the material that's on our surface of the earth is in constant motion. We talked about how the plates can get subducted back under to the mantle, form new magma, and come back up, well, this is another way that that recycling takes place of the rocky material. The rock cycle is always happening. Things are always in constant motion. It may take time, but it's always there. Now, you need to stop the video, go do the lab, and then come back to the video to check your results. Again, it really helps you to do the lab without the answers. I want you to look at these samples, notice what's different, what's similar between them, Try to think about what, if these are my metamorphic rocks, what igneous or sedimentary rocks could they have been in the past? And then once you're done, come back here, check the results. So either right now, you didn't stop the video, stop it now. If you have stopped the video and you're coming back, then go on to the next slide. So here are your metamorphic rocks and their texture, which is coarse or finer, medium, and whether it's foliated or non-foliated. Uh, and almost each of these types of rocks, we can relate back to one of the igneous or sedimentary rocks we have in the classroom. And of course, these rocks, if they part of the rock cycle, get heat, uh, melted, they become magma, they become igneous again, or they can be weathered down to sediment to become sedimentary again.